What up my freaks, Ruinous Insight here with part 57 of my Total War Warhammer 3 Vlad and Isabella Immortal Empires campaign. So as we saw last time, Vlad has begun the invasion of the Fecundite territory, as in the northern portions of the Empire that have been riddled with Chaos forces since basically the beginning of the campaign. Granted, we sort of allowed it to happen and we could have helped them out, but then again, why would we when we had so much, so much to fight and expand our borders into? But now that we've got it going on in the north pretty well, and in the the, uh, east as well I think we can happily move on and take this and thereafter start taking over the Empire itself now Vlad was able to destroy the army at Wolfenburg and take the gold mod and I don't think he's going to be very much opposed in the next few turns as it doesn't look like there's a lot left here fortunately we've also I believe done everything that we needed to do at the end of last episode unless I'm forgetting something and if I am I guess we can uh, figure that out later or not figure it out at all. I don't think I'm forgetting anything. We have no money, we have nothing to build, and nobody to move. So I guess we just go and turn and hope that Scarbrand decides not to run away from Bethilda. So skip uh, building upgrades, yada, yada, yada. Skip, skip, skip. Uh, let's see, Scarby. And no, he ran away. Oh, the ambush was foiled. Yeah, well, to be fair, we were kind of expecting it to be foiled, but that's okay. It does mean that it'll allow us to fight Scarby together with his garrison, which would make for a much better fight than Scarby alone and ambushed by Bethilda's force. Not that I imagine that they could stand against either one. Uh, looks like Harkin has stopped his trade agreement with us, which is a little bit of a shame. Um, but he wasn't providing us much money. I guess it's... Uh, it's still up in the air as to who survives here, so we'll just leave it as it is for now. Because at the end of the day, if Bordelow dies, the Awakening will probably start liking us again, so it's not going to matter that much. And if they don't, we'll just kill him and uh, have Nikolaus slash Noctilus uh, join us. Ally mobilizes. Ooh, we told you to take Stonemine Tower. Yes, we did. Good. For a second I thought I hadn't, uh, I had forgotten to do that, and I'm happy. Looks like Bethilda's got even more construction cost reduction available to her now. Uh, we want to raise her sack belonging to enemies of Moussillon. That's not going to happen, I don't think the enemy has many locations. Now, Rudy. Rudy, 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 you are still badly hurt. Hmm. So here's what I'm thinking. We could go after Grom the Paunch, but there are a bunch of- aha! So you appear to be going down here. We could take a chance and maybe allow Durthor or somebody to attack this. Ignore Aquitaine completely here. While we try to go north, we do want to try to get Misnar. Not so much for ourselves, but rather- ooh, this is all contested, isn't it? And this is shared. Yeah, we won't be able to travel nearly as far as we'd like. Why would we still take attrition in Vampiric territory? What? Oh, there's a high chaos corruption there? What? No, there isn't. Oh, this is our territory. We could enter Moussillon's territory. We do have a military uh, access with them. Hmm. Or we could just risk it, or we could just sit and... You know what? No, go to, go to Bordelow. And try to go north afterwards. I don't think we need to deal with, uh, with Grom right now. There's neutral seas here. I don't think we... Well, the sh in shared seas, we would be healing. Mm, but, hmm. How long would it take to get here? At least one more turn, eh? So, presuming... Oh, wait. I just realized Eltharion is here. No presuming he goes here... In one turn. Then we go, like, here in another turn. And then he'd attack Misnar. Although, who knows? Maybe Nakari is there right now. Oh, we could risk Rudy again. We could put him into March Dance right now and keep going through the sea, which might allow us to reach Misnar in one round. I'm actually not sure that it will. Wait, do you actually have more? Oh, you actually have more movement while in non-March Dance, don't you? Yeah, it looks like we can't reach it in one go anyway. No matter what we do. Hmm. Alrighty, well then I guess we'll just risk it and hope that Altharion is not going there. I'd really like to take the place, but we shall have to see. Now, there is a lot of stuff to do, a lot of admin to do. Let's do a little bit and then we'll head out to uh, fight Scarby here. So, start with Vlad. Vladdy, you are obviously going down to Ergig. Nothing- ooh, you know what? 
diplomacy. We should really do diplomacy first. Mostly because... Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, just, 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 just encircle that for a second. Uh, diplomacy. Quick deal. I want to see if there's anything good that we can get right now. Ironbrow, Clan Spittle, Nordland, that's all fine. Trade agreement looks like nobody really wants one, unfortunately. At least nobody that we want to trade with. Nagrath's getting kind of close, but not right. yet. And actually, it doesn't look like there's anything to do here, does there? Yeah, it doesn't look like it. All right, that's fine. That's fine, Vlad. You can auto-resolve this now. And, oh, damn it, switch the freaking camera view. I hate it when the game does that. Alrighty, fine. You're gonna go here. You're gonna get a free trickster shard, which we don't care about. You still have your plague, at least for one more turn. And there we go. Camera's back to what it should be. And, oh, there's a stack here, but I really doubt that they're gonna go for Vlad. They'd be mad, too. Absolutely mad. Also, Otto, go to Erengrad, and Aldus... Hmm. You know, I don't care if they take Fort Stragoff. They might try to go after the Lair of the Troll King after that, which we do sort of care about. You know what? Go into Channeling Stance and just stay, like, right here. I really don't care about this territory. Oh, but this will mean... No, 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 wait, 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 stop. Ambush? Or will he... What's the likelihood that he actually captures this? Most likely, I think he'll sack it, rather than capture it. Mostly because he did the same at Zoysheng. Oh, damn, one second. Had to move my cat as usual. Damn, I should have I should have kept a tally about how many times I've had to do that throughout the uh, throughout the entire campaign. Got to be at least twenty, uh, probably more. Anyway, Bathilda, you are moving down to Scarby, which is also going to be a well. Actually, that one's most likely going to be a cinematic battle. Yeah, valiant, def really valiant defeat. Yeah, no, it isn't. Don't don't even lie, game. Why are you lying? Ah. Uh, and Bethilda will show you. Bethilda's shown us all already. Uh, Rudy, yeah, you just stay where you are. Pete, you can keep moving towards Desolation, whereas Tech Thief, you're moving to Nagashazar. Roddy, do a real quick attack at Karak Doom here. Let's see if there's a full stack, and there is a stack, but it's garbage and mostly full of Skaven saves. I think we can just auto-resolve that. Yeah. Occupy, and a free Sword of Might, a crone that we don't care about, and... Faction destroyed. Lovely. And you know what? We're gonna keep the Lodestone of Darkness. We're gonna keep it... And we're going to build... We're going to build a Spirit Well here. Later. We're gonna build it later. And we're also gonna build walls here while we're at it. And I also delete those. What we need to do, I think, is give military buildings once again to Tsarina Katrin. So the only way to really do that is to build them for her. Because, well, the AI is kind of incompetent. And we want her... Groms, maybe war bear riders, maybe elemental bears. I haven't decided what exactly we want from her. But uh, there's definitely some Kislevite stuff that we want. Groms and war sleds are the thing that I want most. The other stuff is, uh, well, incidental to it. Uh, also, Renki, I believe we saw at the end of last episode a Kolek somewhere. Kolek is gone. Where, wherefore art Kolek? Okay, I don't know where Kolek went. Maybe he's ambushing or something. Let's uh, move down here. Or maybe he got destroyed by the elves? I agree. It's possible. It's certainly possible. I don't know whether it's the case, but I guess we'll find out. Uh, let's also get a gibbet up and running. Anyway, that's Vlad, that's Rudy, that's Pete, that's Roddy. Aldous, you, well, now nah, you just stay and move in case uh, Wolfric comes and annoys you. Yos, you... I feel like we could send you out to sea for a little while. Is this an island now? It's just a thing. I mean, basically, we either send you out to sea or send you down here. We don't want to activate the oracles as yet. We could also declare war on the Court of Libaris, who is inevitably going to declare war on us. But the thing is, by the time we fight them, Mathilda will have probably destroyed Scarbrand's faction. And probably the Bloody Hands as well. And could probably go there herself, as long as we're not fighting with Camry. While Pete may... Complete Clan Moors' destruction, maybe move down to... Oh, wow, game's lagging a little bit. Uh, and then move down here to start fighting the Poxmakers. 
Maybe if we fight them, these guys will like us enough to confederate. Maybe we can even give them a territory or two and they'll be willing. We'll see. Would be nice, but, you know, it's unlikely. Vanilla really doesn't like you confederating, generally speaking. Uh, anyway, what were we doing? I forgot. Oh, yeah, Yos. You, once again, are gonna go to the sea for now. While you get a few things. And you're gonna wait for your uh, heroes as well. Actually, speaking of your heroes. Peter, uh, you are going to... Well, we probably you're gonna want to stay away from enemy heroes. Let's go through this and hope that you don't get assassinated. Maybe even if you want to preemptively assess. Nah, you can't reach us, okay, you're fine. Also, you want to steal tech, don't you? What's the likelihood of success here? Ooh, fairly low, although the wounding chance is fairly low as well. Ah, just head down to Floating Village. And hopefully Pete can go down this road and then join Yo somewhere in the sea. We also got to get him another Necromancer. We got a Lore Keeper here, which kind of is not useful for us. We're going to get you and then delete you. And hopefully you get replaced by another disciplined unit. All right. Now, anybody else got to move? We definitely have a lot of buildings to build. We can do that later. Uh, tech thief, tech thief. We'll do that after as well. After the fight, I mean. And I believe that's it. I also just want to double check one thing. Uh, in trade... Wait, what? Wait, what? Wait, didn't we just check this and wasn't it like... Huh. Interesting. Why? Why do they suddenly want to trade? Did we just acquire a new territory? Ergig has wood. Is that why? Because we acquired... But we didn't get the wood building. So it's not actually producing anything. It's only the idea of wood. Slaneshi giggle. Huh. Well, that's odd, but I'll take it. Uh, Nagareth, you really want that, eh? You want our wood. Hmm. <laughs> And, oh, e e e e e you gotta go with the Eate. Oh, wow. Not just the Eate, but the Ghost of Pahwax as well. And that's also... T nah, Eatain's probably more valuable, but... Hmm. This is real interesting as well. I did potentially want to make an alliance with the Ghost of Pahwax, because they're so far away, we're never going to conquer their stuff. On top of the fact that there are enemies of the Oracles, on top of the fact that it's an easy access to more... Uh, uh, to more lizard units. And you guys know how I like easy access. But anyway, Ghosts of Pahwax or Eatane. The thing is, a good alliance with Eatane will go for an alliance with basically all of the uh, High Elves. Nagareth likes this so much that we perhaps will have an easier time getting them to join in on this later. Yeah, you know what? Let's go with Eatane for now. I, am the heir of I like the idea. And we'll actually do this without actual extra money to for this to be considered a gift like so very well all righty then i imagine the others will no longer want our trade agreement actually nagareth still does and ghost of pockbox are at 3.9 now which is well it's affordable ish where are they at war with clan pestilence rapturous excess you know what what if we do this wait what oh they don't want us to join war against rapturous excess okay what about clan pestilence they do, but not so much. Hmm. Really, that's kind of surprising. What do they like? They like our treaties with Bordelow Errant and our military actions against rogue pirates. I'm very tempted to do this, but 15k is a little bit on the steeper side. Hmm. And oh wow, Last Defenders love this too. But the Last Defenders might die, that's the thing. We do potentially want their lizard units, but anyway, let's start with Nagareth. And wow, they'll do military axes for this as well. That's beautiful. We don't even need to join war against anybody. Anybody else, that is. And then we'll do this like this for it to be considered a gift. Yeah, ooh. A decent amount of cash. Nah, but let it be considered a gift because the other elves will like us for it. Lovely. Okay. Okay, anybody else want trades? Alright, looks like this is going to be a little bit of an admin heavy. I promise we'll do a battle right after we're done with diplomacy. This was kind of unexpected, as you guys can probably tell. Ah, the Ghost of Pahwaks are now minus 6.9. Yeah, because there's a limited amount of goods, but we'll be getting more. Hopefully soonish. Wow, War Host of the Apocalypse. Uh, yeah, that's not gonna happen because everybody would hate us for it, but it is an interesting concept. You're fighting all the lizards, the surgers of Kotep, so I don't think we'll do that. 
I am a little bit, a little bit tempted to try the last defenders, but the thing is, they're not going to give us much money for it. And then the same thing goes for the Iron Brows Expedition, but they're kind of dead. You know what, I think we'll leave it as it is for yes. now. Mm, but we'll keep an eye on things. If we get the Ghost of Pahwax going again, right. I'm sure they'll appreciate it. Monst armored in faith. I'm just double checking everything else. Yeah, okay, I think we're good. Let us also. Uh, Hans Marshall's expedition is still alive, though very, very much barely. And now, yeah, they're fighting Hexoaddle. They're not going to survive. I want to dower. Uh, what? Hmm. I wanted to get rocket artillery from them. We could try to get it from Nuln, but the problem with Nuln is they have the. Uh, they have a building we want. They have the Blood Knight building. Hmm. Which makes me think we should probably destroy them as well, but they could give us access to all the sweet Imperial tech. Ugh, I'll think about it. I really want to collect all of the uh, special buildings. Anyway, I think that's it for now. Very tempted on the last defenders, but we'll hold off. I'm just gonna hope that we can do a Hexoidal at some point, although I think we'd have to start giving them gifts or something. Either way, we'll consider this later. Let's attack Death Gorge with uh, Bathilda for now. Yeah. Alrighty, and... Yeah, we're definitely doing this cinematically, because we can't do it otherwise. Here we go, Bathilda versus Scarbrand. Uh, let's see what he can do. Ooh, he's got some decent regiments of renown. The Knights of the Brazen Throne and the Hellforged Host. Both very, very strong units. We'll have to make sure we kill those. Once again, it is done, and damn, the uh, Cornate Corruption looks really nice. I feel like the vampires would enjoy this sort of thing as well, and ooh, the, uh, is that snow falling or something? At the same time as the, uh, as it's, at the same time as the sky glows red, it's very, very nice. Plus, we've got our own red color scheme, and the AI has its own red color scheme as well. It's all uh, nice and red and bloody, and everybody's happy about it. Anyway, we're gonna open up the battle by heading towards the gate with our carriages, who work through gates extraordinarily fast. Just look at those, uh, gate health numbers drop. Yeah, it only takes seconds. Bathilda, of course, and her other vampires are on top of the walls working on the enemy uh, Chaos Wars of Corn with Halberds. There, the gates are nearly done already and should be destroyed, and we'll be able to head into the city. Bathilda opens up the battle with a Dragon's Breath on top or into the Blood Letters and the Chaos Warriors, though it mostly hit the Chaos Warriors there. Um, but that's just fine. They are Halberdiers, of course, so they should be decent against anti large. Oh, wow. <laughs> That was a very nice jump uh, down the stairs, or pounce. Adorable dragon pounce. Even the zombie dragons still get the adorable animation. Which normally I might complain about, i.e. reuse of animations, but on the other hand, it's too adorable not to have, so... Yeah, uh, there we go. Looks like we're doing decent damage, and those blood letters are already below half HP, and the Chaos Wars of Corn with Calibers are 25%. Bathilda and her handmaid just absolutely ripping them apart, as they are, well, at the very least, Bathilda is most definitely an infantry blunder. Otherwise, the rest of our forces are moving in and keeping out of range of the enemy towers just very, very slightly, although we shouldn't really need the infantry, at least not yet. We did send our carriages through the gate immediately and they are going to be fighting a lot of chaos warriors and other such units here but i don't imagine they'll have too much of a problem with it yeah the enemy's gonna keep blobbing up here but once again this isn't really a concern for the carriages if this was all piles of phoenix guard or something maybe but not like this at least not without Scarbrand here, and actually, speaking of Scarbrand, he is sitting all the way back here, surrounded by a unit of blood letters and a bunch of other reinforcing units. I mean, he's got a ton of melee up here instead of around the gate, which may be a decent idea on his part, because it means that they can't be hit by magics, but it is a little bit annoying since we then can't send Bathilda out to attack him. And who looks like that tower missed the... missed Thrisha very, very closely, unless it wasn't actually 
actually shooting for Thrusha, but it's not really getting anything here, so I feel like it was. And uh, we do have double Spirit Leeches, so we're going to continue dropping those on Scarbrand while the rest of our magics come out to play as well. There's an overcast Wind of Death from Bathilda, and actually bouncing three times through the enemy formation, only to be followed up essentially immediately with a Penumbral Pendulum. Lots of armor-piercing damage, and the forces here around our carriages are already very badly beat up. Indeed, the Knights of the Brazen Throne are here as well, and as soon as we can kill the rest of those units, we can get to obliterating those uh, high-value targets. Otherwise, our carriages are completely unharmed, and we can just keep doing what we're doing. There we go. Once again, I really do love the contrast between the uh, between the ethereal units that we've got, the Balefire and the Bloody Glow of the Coronate units. Another Wind of Death coming in, this time from the Necromancer rather than from Bathilda. And just dishing out a little bit more damage and another triple bounce through this enemy. Blob. Yeah, it works out quite well. And now, obviously, our Crypt Horrors are here to help out the four carriages, the White King, and our two Mortis engines. I wonder how it calculates the, uh, the damage as to wait. Let's just see. You have 149 kills and you have 97, so one has gotten a lot more kills than the other, although their damage is fairly close together. Uh, Johan's actually doing fairly well as well at 90 kills with that Wind of Death, and just out of curiosity, how's our White King doing? Only 16 kills, but, you know, that shouldn't be surprising. 836 damage. Really not much to speak of, but that's not really why he's here. If he had a Lord to fight, maybe a Blood Reaper or something, and then we do that. But for now, not really necessary. We can also see Bathilda flying around in the background together with Thrusha. They're just attacking any towers that they can reach so that they are silenced and not attacking our units. So they're not really a threat to our uh, Blob here, or at least our mini Death Star. They're only a threat to our Crypt Horrors and our Grave Guard, which are moving in. Though this is like the second or third summon of Blood Letters that the enemy has uh, gotten in the middle of the gate here, just to block us and annoy us. I don't know if it's a good move or not, because they're not really achieving anything, but it is annoying. So in a way, they are achieving something. Well, you get to work on them, Crypt Horrors. And Graveguard as well. There we go. They get surrounded and then they turn and back into the flames from whence they came. Uh, looks like Scarby is getting hit with another Spirit Leech. Hasn't taken a crazy amount of damage yet, but that will soon change, I'm sure. And the balance of power is very much in our favor now, at about 65-70% perhaps. And the enemy has lost about half of their troops. Can't tell how many of our troops we have lost because all of the deaths are zombie deaths, but I would hazard a guess that it's close to zero. Also looks like the Knights of the Blazon Brazen Throne, rather, are, well, Blazen Throne. It is in some ways perhaps a Blazen Throne as well, but <laughs> uh, not in that way. Yeah, these guys are on their last legs. You gotta love the unit, though. Makes me sad to watch him die. Too bad we can't steal this unit from them somehow. All right, looks like this guy's gonna run away by himself while all his friends die, although he's moving extremely slowly. I wonder why this is. Oh, no, he's back to speed now. Although perhaps a teensy bit late. But he might be able to outrun everything if he doesn't get killed by the Mortis Engine Aura. Run, little buddy, run. Alrighty, well, we'll leave them to the chase. Now it's time to start zom summoning zombie piles up here. They will be absolutely obliterated by the blood letters, of course, but we have a near infinite supply of zombies, at least as far as the AI is concerned. Yeah, about ten or nine to ten summons between Bathilda and our uh, Necromancer, but that's more than enough. I'm just going to keep raising them up here to force all these units that were guarding Scarbrand into a, uh, into a blob, or at least to start moving down here and fighting rather than doing nothing. Scarbrand's still moving around in the background but refusing to join the fray and while he remains surrounded there's no reason to send Bathilda down to fight him. In the meantime as while these units move in to fight our zombies we'll be using our dragon breath on them and any spell work we can catch them with shortly as well. The winds of death have come in very handy here. Ah, oh, you gotta love the red sky. I wish we'd, uh, wish we'd have a little bit more of this. And here comes our Death Star as well, the Mortis Engine as well as several of the, uh, 
Uh, well, actually, that's all of the black coaches, and here comes that other Wind of Death, which should hopefully bounce uh, just like the others have. One and two and three. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Very effective this time around, really. Not that the Wind of Death ever isn't uh, really effective, but, you know, this time particularly, because we were getting the bounces to work in the manner that we want. And the Penumbral Pendulum once again to follow that up as the enemy keeps streaming downhill into the battle with those zombies. Not even using our Lord as yet, because we don't really need to. And now that the Mortis Engine is here, they're also going to start taking AoE damage. Another hit of a Spirit Leech on Scarbrand, and I actually started to move Bathilda to start dueling Scarbrand, but it looks like he wants to jump in with the rest of his forces as well, which is just fine by me. As soon as we get that last Dragon Breath out, and that is the third and last one that we have, we are going to have Bathilda jump in and attack Scarbrand, and look at his warriors fly. They really just wanted to join Scarbrand up in the air, didn't they? And there we go, finally, and they begin to face off. Those Spirit Leeches will continue to drop. We're not even going to bother sending in Thrisha, uh, just because I don't think Bathilda needs the help here. And all those bloody corpses around, and it looks like Scarbrand got terrified by the prospect of this fight and is now in Banished as well. The rest of his army routing our own losses continue to be extremely minimal. I think the only damage we've really taken is the, what, 20% maybe damage or 15% to the... Uh, to one of these black coaches, and otherwise it doesn't look like anything. Maybe Scarbrand managed to hit that one, maybe not, but ultimately, it won't matter that much. I assume we'll see him back at least once more before the uh, faction is dead, but... Uh, not super effective, Scarby. You needed some better units in your army, that's for damn sure. Especially if you wanted to stand against Bethilda's obnoxiously good army. Which is ironic, because Bethilda's army is certainly one of the... I think it's one of the cheaper armies, I want to say, that we have. It doesn't have a lot of crazy expensive units, as the Black Coaches aren't really all that expensive. Nah. Yeah, a really good army, I like it. And got a lot of uh, balanced aspects to it, minus the lack of uh, a second vampire to get a little bit more of an air force. But anyway, there we go. The battle just like that is over. We're just going to heal up our black coaches as they are our single entity units. Uh, but it looks like we've not really taken any damage. And there we are. Cl close victory. Because of the mana we spent, perhaps? I doubt it's close otherwise. Valiant defeat, was it auto-resolve? Bethilda scoffs at your valiant defeat. And uh, frankly, she scoffs at this close victory concept too. Zero losses, zero damage. Scarbrand melted rather than face Bethilda in battle. And uh, was otherwise completely surrounded by his troops for the entire time. So, yeah, a little bit sad. Uh, if I feel like Scarbrand should be unbreakable, but then again, maybe he'd be too powerful if he was, uh, because he heals so much when he's in uh, combat, or does he do AoE damage? I don't remember. Uh, what I do know is that uh, it's a little bit unfortunate when he's breakable. It would be nice, uh, would be nice for him if he weren't. Either way, very nice battle. Uh, we got some nice shots, even if it, uh, uh, even if it showed Scarbrand's incompetence on the defense. And Blood Quencher is quite a nice buff. Weapon strength plus eight and charge bonus, all of which works quite nicely for our Mortis engines and our Black Coaches. So it does work for this army. Would also work fairly nicely for our uh, cavalry army. Now that I think about it. Now you don't need this. You do, however, need walls and. Let's go with the Balefire Brazier. We probably don't need the income here, but we do need to counteract all the corruption. All right. Now, I just want to see, did that do anything to our standing with anybody? Just right. out of curiosity. Since... What? No, no, everybody still really wants to trade. This is still really tempting, damn it. But I feel like if we don't trade with them right now, we're more likely to trade the Ghost of Pahwaks into something. 
They do have an aversion to us, unfortunately, but we could slowly start giving them gifts, for example. Uh, they're also trading with Katasotek and Talakwa, so there's a decent chance that they might even, uh, not vassalize, but rather confederate. Hmm. 1305 for a small gift? Yeah, let's, let's do it. And there we go. Hopefully they like that. I'm moving up to minus 18 now. Which is not too bad. In fact, while we're here, and I know that this is kind of annoying, but uh, it's it's a diplomacy kind of episode, and it's a Scarbrand killing kind of episode as well, of course, but uh, I figure we give gifts to everybody here. Uh, Iotain's the most important one, so let's start with you. Yeah. And yeah, it's going to cost us money that we could use to develop, well, everything, but uh, let's face it, this is going to pay... And dividends Boy, later Vress on. Alright. That's Evress, Nagareth, and Navalor in our next payment game. offer. 3,000 for it. I guess we just did give you a gift, so let's and skip I you. What about you? Welcome. And 1,700, yeah, it's a little bit better. Alright, enjoy, Alariel. Alariel likes us the most. She just doesn't like the fact that we have treaties with Moussillon, but they ain't that much. We should also be double-checking if they'd be willing... They'd be willing to join war. Uh. Uh. What? Wait, is this? Huh. What's going on here? Just out of curiosity now. Wait, what? They're willing to... This, this has got to be a bug, right? Wait. Let's take... I don't know. Who's another sort of friendly faction? Uh, you are now our vassal, so not so much. Who's friendly? Who's friendly? Who likes us, but do we don't really have an alliance with? Let's say Caravan of Blue Roses. Join war against... Minus 74. Okay, no. Wait, so basically Alariel's just willing to join the war against everybody? Huh. Well, that is odd. Uh... Now I don't know. Do we do this? May so it's, is it just you? What if we go with Nagareth? Join war against everybody. No, Nagareth doesn't want to. So it's just you. Maybe we've reached the point where they like us enough. Maybe the enemies that they're fighting are too weak. But why would they want to join war against like a billion factions? I am the heir of Anarion, and I bid you welcome. This is happening here too. What the heck is going on? I don't understand. And oh man, now I'm, I'm I'm just thinking we would get a uh, fairly decent advantage in doing this, as it would make it much more likely that we'd be able to ally with them. Though we are slowly on the way to allying with them anyway. And the question is, do we do we do this? And I'm I'm just kind of at a loss for words as to whether this is an actual bug or not, because Nagareth doesn't want to. Uh, Eltharion the Grim does. So, Avalorn, Ivress, and Iotain do. What do you have of the Phoenix King, stranger? Tyranog does not. Okay, Tyranog's at 23, Iotain's at 26, slightly higher. Ivress is at 41, Nagroth is at 3. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Let's take a look at somebody who also has a high relationship with us, but also is into Vassal, like, let's say, Carcassonne. But also loves us. 315. Would you be willing to join war against everybody? No, you would not. Okay, so it's just the elves. Something is doing something to three of the elven factions. It feels... Hmm. You know what? I know that this is probably going to be... Well, you know what? Let's do the admin. Let's do the admin, and I'm going to leave it up to you guys. I... I'm not sure. I Because I wanted to have them join more wars, but... Now I'm not sure whether we should, but it only seems to affect three factions, so maybe we should? Because I feel like if we do this now, it would mean a lot less diplomacy as we go into the future, because we'd get upgrades with them eventually, you know what I mean? Or we'd get alliances with them, rather, eventually. There's no doubt about that, because, well, our reputation with them will just keep growing and growing and growing and growing, and we can save a lot of episode time in the future just by forcing them into all these wars. And these are all factions that they're not actually nearby, are they? Most of the factions that they're at war with won't affect them at all, except possibly 
Uh, except possibly the Shadow Legion, but that's fine. And they're already at war with everybody who's bordering them, which is Nakari and the uh, Cult of Pleasure. And I really like the idea of saving on diplomacy time in the future. Mostly because it'll save like 10 minutes from every episode. You know what? I, I've never mind. I've convinced myself we're gonna do it. I will weigh what you have to say. And no, I haven't. You know what? Up to you guys. <laughs> you let me know what you think. Uh, I wanted to take advantage of that or not. I'm not sure whether it's actually a bug or something about diplomacy that I don't understand. Uh, but uh, let's just complete a little bit of admin then call this episode. I don't know. It's, it's odd, is all I'm gonna say. And in fact, there isn't that much admin. Just building some buildings and uh, some tech thieves and stuff to move around. So let's just do that real quick. I mean, we do got a lot of... Uh, we do got a lot of... Uh, fortifications still to build. As you guys have been saying in the comments, we do have to prepare, prepare for the endgame scenario, which I'm still not sure when it's coming, but it is coming. Eventually. I think I had it at default, so it should be between turn 100 and 150. So any time between now and very much not now. Uh, you're at 5, so you're good. Alrighty, next tech thief. You're at 2, so you are very much not so good. Uh, let's send you up to the Port of Secrets and steal their secrets from there. And Assassin, you have tried to find Kolek, but failed to do so. And I believe that's pretty much it. Okay. Well, let's do some building building, but we'll save some money for potentially some diplomacy stuff. Uh, nothing to build here, Hawkland. Add a gig we just took, and maybe we get the wood up and running for more potentially... Uh... Nah, we need the growth. Yeah, there's like no growth here whatsoever because of the massive amount of Nurgle corruption, perhaps? This actually doesn't seem to reduce growth. Hmm. Nah, we can't get the uh, Balefire Brazier. Yeah, we need this Nurgle Corruption gone. So to Crudenwald we shall go, but uh, yeah, for now I get the Charnel Pit. For Tr Strogoff, I don't really care about. Karak Doom, we will build stuff for our Vassal later. Help it. Yeah, you know what? We need the walls here. We definitely do. And Siok Track, and while we're here, I know this costs way more than I'd like to pay right now, but uh, well, let's upgrade you. Alright, what else? Uh, Sartosa, definitely wall yourself up. Don't want to be losing Sartosa. Falls of Doom is fine. River Linsk is fine. Aha, Karak Buftar. Upgrade. Get your Forester Shack. Let's get the Gibbet here. Black Mountains. Migdalvon Galbarak. A little bit on the expensive side. Hmm. We do want to upgrade you, but do we want to upgrade you right now? In fact, if anything, we probably want to delete you and replace you with walls and a Gibbet, but... Uh, 4,800, you know what, let's pass on that just for a little while. Skaven Blight, you definitely need walls. I would hate to lose you. Kislev, you need to be upgraded at, like, as soon as we can. Karakate Peaks, yeah, so do you. Lots of places need upgrades. And you know what, I think we'll keep the rest of the cash as it is for now. And just in case we need it for diplomacy, we can always cancel some stuff. Anyway, I'm gonna call this episode here rather than end the turn. You guys let me know what you think about this. I don't know whether we should do this or not. I am inclined to do so because it doesn't seem like it's a bug by virtue of the fact that it is a... Uh, uh, by virtue of the fact that only some of the High Elves are willing to do this, but it is odd that they want to declare war on everybody or join war against everybody. Maybe it's because these are the three stronger factions here. Notice that Eltharian, Avalorn, and Eotain, rather Ivress, Avalorn, and Eotain are the ones that are willing, whereas the weaker factions like Tyrannoch, which is basically dead, and Nagareth, which is currently in a war with like a bunch of really strong factions, are the ones not willing. So maybe it's tied to that, and not a bug at all, in which case it wouldn't be cheap. But once again, my, th my thinking is that the strongest argument for doing that is skipping a lot of diplomacy in the future with regards to slowly giving them gifts over and over and over again. So yeah, you guys let me know about that and we will act as uh, the well. per the consensus. Uh, stay tuned for more Vlad and Izzy. Don't forget to leave a like and comment. Sorry about the short episode, but I really do think that needs this needs to be put to a uh, question. All glory to the algorithm. And thanks for watching.